One man who would escape execution following the Second World War was Heinrich Himmler. The Reichsführer SS was in charge of the SS, the paramilitary organisation that was responsible for the running of the concentration camps. Himmler was a despicable Nazi, who would, during the Second World War, be responsible for the deaths of millions. He would form the Einsatzgruppen, that would execute civilians en masse, following advancements by the Wehrmacht, and he would at the end of the war turn on Hitler. Himmler was smart, and he knew that the war was lost by spring 1945, and he would go into self-preservation mode, as he would try to negotiate peace talks with the Allies himself, without Hitler having any clue what was going on. When Hitler found this out, he was furious, and he ordered the arrest of arguably the second most powerful man in the Third Reich. But Himmler would never be brought to the Nuremberg trials, as on the 23rd of May 1945, whilst in British custody, he took his own life, and prevented the hangman doing it for him. He would have been most definitely the most high profile to go to the gallows, along with Hermann Goering, but his death is something that remains debatable to this day. But after his death, a death mask was cast of Himmler's face, and it shows the evil SS man, with almost a smug countenance, and almost an arrogance, as if he had had the last laugh against his captors. Join us today as we look at the haunting death mask of Heinrich Himmler, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Himmler by April 1945 was a wanted man. Hitler had ordered his arrest for going behind his back to try and make peace with the Allies. Because of this, he went on the run. But he was also being hunted by the Allies, and the net around him was closing in. He had no friends anymore in the Nazi party, and he was being searched for heavily by his enemies. He had been stripped of all his party and state offices, and was expelled from the Nazi party, and even when Admiral Dönitz took control as a president, Himmler would offer himself as a second in command, but Dönitz wanted nothing to do with him. Heinrich Himmler had not made any previous preparations to go on the run and to hide out, and at the time he could have possibly escaped down one of the established rat lines, and somehow evaded capture, and to flee to South America. After the war, many Nazis would turn up in countries such as Argentina, including Adolf Eichmann and Josef Mengar, who managed to escape. Himmler and his companions, on the 11th of May 1945, went to Friedrichskug, and it was clear they did not really know where to go. They slept wherever they could, and would sleep in barns, and even at the side of the road, in concealed positions. They continued to travel throughout the countryside, and they wanted to avoid towns and cities which were falling into Allied control. But on the 22nd of May, Himmler and his group came into British custody. They were trying to cross a bridge, but the British did not know who they had in their captivity. The report of the arrest stated, at 5pm on the 22nd of May, a party of three German civilians were detained at a bridge control in Bremer Vorder. Their papers indicated they were recently discharged from the German army, and the telltale SD stamp was again present. They were put under arrest by Sergeant Britton. In interrogation it became clear that they were the rear guard and stated they were en route for Munich. One of the party was Sergeant Heinrich Hitzinger, an unimpressive figure, with several days growth of beard, long hair, no glasses, and patch over one eye. He was dressed in an odd collection of civilian garments and a blue raincoat on top. Himmler had been seized, and then he was moved to different camps before he was taken to the 31st Civilian Interrogation Camp near to Lüneburg on the 23rd of May. Inside this camp he was recognised by a number of Nazi prisoners, and he then took his eye patch off. But he must have known that he would be given over by a prisoner, and that his real identity would be given up. Because of this he asked for a meeting with the camp's commandant, the captain, Thomas Sylvester. Sylvester asked the prisoner his real name, and Himmler declared his full, proper name, and with this it was reported to the British military hierarchy that Heinrich Himmler was in their custody, and the game was up. The British officer told Himmler to take off his clothes for a search, and a brass capsule was found on his possession. This was a cyanide capsule, which is what Hitler may have intended to take his own life with. But there was another brass capsule which was found, which was empty. But the missing cyanide was nowhere to be seen, his mouth was not checked, but later Himmler would have some food and tea, meaning that at some point it was not in his mouth. A military doctor was prepared to give him a thorough body search to locate the missing cyanide capsule, 
but Himmler would in his final moments try to be cooperative with his captors, and he was transported to the headquarters of the 2nd British Army in Lüneburg, where a doctor was to conduct a more thorough search. The hunt was on for the missing Sinai capsule, and he was examined all over. He was asked to open his mouth, and it was claimed by the officer that inside his mouth was a small object. When this was spotted, Himmler panicked and bit down on the cyanide capsule, and he took the poison. The British officers tried their best to clear it out, but within 15 minutes he was dead. One of the officers would state, We immediately upended Himmler and got his mouth into a bowl of water, which was there to wash out the poison. There were terrible groans and grunts coming from the swine. The highest profile prisoner of the Second World War was no more, and the British would have been incredibly angry, based on the fact he would have had so much key information on the inner workings of the SS and also the Nazi party. As mentioned, if he would have been taken to Nuremberg, he would have certainly been executed. But what is strange is that Himmler must have believed at some point that he would escape and evade capture, as he would not bite down on the Sinai capsule before, and he would do this when it was found. He would have carried the capsule for miles on his journey before the capture, and he could have done this deed at any point. He may have believed that the Allies would have spared him, in this blind sense of delusion, but this would never have been the case. Lying on the floor of the room where he died, Himmler's remains told a rather strange story. He had been half covered by a blanket, and his arms crossed over his chest. His eyes remained closed, and his glasses were still on his face, and his lips were closed and pursed together, and in some images it looks as if he's almost smiling, as if he's had the last laugh against the British. His hair is receding to the back of his head, and he almost lies there peacefully, which is bizarre considering he was a man who caused so much brutality, evil and death, during the Second World War and before inside of Nazi Germany. He was responsible for the deaths of millions, but on the floor of a British headquarters building, he lay motionless. But at some point in the moments after his death, there were a number of things which occurred. Himmler's body was autopsied and it was said that the body was that of an adult male, well nourished and physique up to average standard. He had an average size head and few grey hairs were noticeable and his hair had recently been cut whilst he was in captivity. He was found to have no obvious deformities but then a death mask was cast of Himmler's face. A death mask was a plaster impression of a corpse which was pressed after an individual had passed and these were done of very high profile historical figures. Kings and queens had death masks but what was strange was to think why did the British take the impression of Himmler's face? They may have done this for a number of reasons. Firstly to show people a likeness of the former head of the SS's face and to use it to confirm that he had died. There were very few death masks cast during the Second World War, especially of those prominent and high-ranking Nazis who were involved in such crimes as Himmler was. Another reason why it may have been cast was to make sure that his face and the image of evil could be used as a chilling reminder of the evils of the Nazi party. But as mentioned, the death mask shows him almost smiling and asleep, and it's bizarre to think that the man whose face it was cast on is linked so much to terror. There are other prominent Nazis who were subjected to a death mask, including Reinhard Heydrich, who was killed in Prague in 1942. The Butcher of Prague was killed by SOE-trained assassins, but it was strange for the British to take the imprint of Himmler, especially after his death. There were more than one death mask taken allegedly, and these were made from latex. One of them was allegedly sent to General Eisenhower's headquarters to show that the Allies and the British had got Himmler. It's believed that one more death mask was cast secretly, and this was done in private by the physician. It's believed also that Himmler's brain was removed before his body was then buried in secret. The British surgeons also took casts of Himmler's ears and skull too, but the locations of these are not known. Heinrich Himmler was one of the most evil men of the Second World War, and he was responsible for the deaths of millions of people. He would oversee the concentration camps and the SS throughout a period in which they massacred and killed scores of people. He was one of the most evil Nazis in history, but today his death mask shows a very strange image. When viewing the death mask, it's hard to think that this face that was underneath this contributed to such terror and evil 
during the Second World War, and it's strange to stare into the face of one of the most despicable men to ever walk planet Earth. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.